is Qigong all that you need? We'll talk about that and more in today's walk and talk video. I'm Sifu Anthony and I'm here in spectacular Andros, Greece. This is actually the island that my father's family is from. And I'm here with my family visiting and this is a bit of a family reunion and we're exploring and it's really, it's really a fantastic time. But look at this place, it's just amazing. So we'll walk and talk and explore a little bit together. That's our hotel in the background there, that, that little white building back there. It's a nice little boutique hotel with this view. <laughs> so I wake up every morning to this, it's really spectacular. Okay, let's get to the topic. Oh, by the way, for those who follow my walk and talks, obviously Sergeant Pepper, my trusty sidekick, is not here. He's at summer camp. He's, uh, he's having a grand old time with lots of other dogs while we're here in Greece. So obviously I didn't bring him with me to Greece. Okay, so this question, is Qigong all that you need, is one that I get periodically and I, I'm getting it especially this week and I'll tell you why. So recently I sent out an email uh, encouraging people to check out a free workshop by a good friend of mine who is an expert in all things related to the fascia. Uh, she helped me a couple years ago to release my own fascia using cool techniques with a foam roller. And that in turn, by releasing my fascia, I got better results with my Qigong. And she helped me with back pain that I was having at the time because I had injured my back. And anyway, I just, I, if you know me and my teachings about Qigong, you know that I'm interested in the fascia. And she's an expert in fascia, so that's how we became friends. So she's doing a little free workshop and I sent out an email encouraging people to check it out. And you know, most everybody absolutely loves a workshop and you know, they're, they're interesting in it, in it, interested in what she has to say and her teachings. Uh, but a few people have emailed me saying, well, but why would I need this if I have Qigong? And I have seen this in the past. In fact, one of my uh, teachers, one of my main teachers used to encourage this kind of thinking, this think kind of thinking which is sort of like, oh, Qigong is everything that you need. Qigong is all you need. If you just practice Qigong, everything will be perfect. And in my years of discipleship with him, it became clear that that was just simply not true, that that, that didn't work out for many, many students, myself included. Hang on a second, I'm at a bit of an impasse here and we're gonna move around. I don't know what this little thing is here, but it's blocking me from getting down to the beach. So this idea, and it exists, it's not, just, it's not just one teacher, it's many teachers, including some big name teachers who sort of suggest that if you practice Qigong, that's all you need and you'll be perfectly healthy and everything will be fine. So first of all, let me back up to the very beginning of my experience with Qigong. Uh, if you know my story, then you know that I actually started with a combination of acupuncture and Qigong. Or rather, I started with Qigong, but then I fell into a depression. It was sort of too late. I wasn't able to get my Qigong habit going soon enough to combat the depression. And I fell into a long depressive episode and I just wasn't practicing my Qigong. I was just sort of, I had, I had the knowledge and the skill, but I just wasn't practicing it. So I was lucky enough to get some acupuncture. Uh, my, my mother actually suggested and she actually paid for the first few sessions because I was young and broke and depressed and uh, I went to this acupuncturist and he kicked my ass basically and whipped me into shape with acupuncture and herbs. I say kicked my ass because it was intense. It was intense treatment and the herbs were intense. The whole process was very intense uh, but also very healing and that's what got me back up onto my feet and got me practicing Qigong again. I don't know why I'm giving you this view. Well, it's cool to see the, the view of the houses, the Greek houses with the blue, but hang on a second and let me give you this view. <laughs> okay, so my sort of introduction to actually practicing Qigong and getting results was a combination of acupuncture, herbs, and Qigong. And technically or traditionally, those are three separate arts. In the past, you might only be lucky enough to get one of them. Uh, so acupuncture is its own art. Herbology, although often practiced by acupuncturists, 
is technically its own art. So I studied both when I was in acupuncture college. And then Qigong is its own branch and you know also something that is almost always taught at acupuncture college. Uh, I myself took Qigong classes at acupuncture college and then eventually taught some there. So these are three separate arts, but of course they work synergistically together. They all use Chinese medicine as the base. Uh, they all fit together nicely. And that's, that's how I began my journey to Qigong. Later in life, I started to branch out. I started to figure, well, okay, if these related arts of Qigong and you know herbology, even, I was gonna even say Tai Chi, which is related art, uh, if these Chinese arts work so well together, what about other arts? So I had some colleagues who were chiropractors and I experimented with that, not just on myself, but in terms of referring students. So hundreds and hundreds of students, I ended up referring to chiropractors, massage therapists, of course, acupuncturists, uh, other modalities that you know are less common. I experimented, you know, I trusted these practitioners, I referred my students to them, then I listened to the feedback from my students after they had gone to see these practitioners. And, you know, I gathered a lot of experience in terms of the, let's call it the synergy of Qigong combined with many other things. And I'm sure you know where I'm going with this. The results are very clear and very obvious that Qigong works beautifully with many different healing modalities. In fact, for many people, it seems to be sort of the missing link. And I think there's a few pieces to that that I wanna, I wanna discuss. So for example, Qigong, first of all, seems to boost just about any healing modality that you, you choose. So if you're getting massage, for example, Qigong will help you to get more out of the massage. If you're getting acupuncture or taking Chinese herbs, it will help you to get more out of those. It's just sort of, it, you can just think of it as a magnifier. It magnifies the effects of those other arts. But there's also the fact that Qigong is participatory. And this is a huge thing. This is my whole way of teaching. I love Qigong because it allows me to participate in my own healing. It's not just me going to an acupuncturist and having them do the work on me. I get to participate on a daily basis in my own healing process. And to me, that's beautiful. It's often what's missing in the world of healing. So anyone who practices any art that relies on somebody else to do the healing, I always think that Qigong is a beautiful addition to that and will help them to get more out of it. And then it works vice versa too. People who are just primarily practicing Qigong, but maybe they have a stubborn problem or they've got an issue they want to address directly. Well, then you go find another healing modality that works for you. And the good news is that you can, you can sort of try different things and see what works and Qigong seems to fit nicely with all those things. So back to the question, is Qigong all you need? You understand that for my entire teaching career, I have always recommended that people explore other healing modalities. I've really, even when I was still with, I was still a disciple of that, that teacher who would always say, Qigong is all you need. Um, I just kind of, you know, I didn't repeat that message. I did my best not to because it was clearly not true. Uh, he was overselling Qigong, in my opinion, and also really underselling a lot of other modalities which fit beautifully in. So I think the fear there is that you undermine someone's Qigong practice, and that's exactly what I'm seeing from some of these questions lately, is people, they, they desperately want to believe that Qigong is all that they need. And, you know, so there's a bit of a, a, a disillusionment there when I suggest another healing modality. But you know what? Sometimes disillusionment like that is a good thing. Sometimes it's the healthiest thing that you can do. And really, it's just the, the honest truth that many of you have already come to on your own, which is that you know there's a synergy of especially holistic methods or even somewhat holistic methods that when you combine them with a holistic method like Qigong, well, the results are just incredible. So for some people, this is a wake-up call, and I think it's a good it's a good thing, it's a good wake up call because what it comes down to is what I always talk about in my teaching, which is results, or we could just say benefits. What are the benefits that you're getting from your Qigong practice? And are you keeping track of them? Are you measuring them? Are you being honest with yourself? So for example, if you were in chronic pain before you started Qigong and then you started Qigong, did Qigong help with the chronic pain? How much did it help? Uh, did it get, get you off your pain meds? Are you more mobile and more active than you were before? 
I mean, there are a million things to measure. I'm just talking about pain. We can measure happiness, mood levels. We can measure energy levels. We can measure our digestive system. We can, you know, there's so many things that we can measure in terms of benefits and results. And I want you to be doing that. Just focus on the benefits. Um, my style of teaching Qigong is to emphasize the benefits. And, you know, if we need to tweak traditional ideas in a modern way to get our so that our benefits increase, then we will absolutely do that. It's funny, students sometimes ask, like, is it okay to do it this way? I know it's not exactly the way that the past masters taught it. So my question is, well, is that helping you? Are you getting better results of doing this, this adjustment that whatever it is that you're doing? And if the answer is yes, then yes, it's okay to do it. It's okay to do things that bring you more benefit. So that's, that's why I recommended this, uh, this colleague of mine, this friend of mine who works on myofascial release and the fascia. If that brings you more benefit, then good for you. Take advantage of it. It's not to replace Qigong. By no means is would I ever be suggesting that people replace Qigong. Uh, but it may complement your Qigong. If not, if you don't like it, well, I'll do it. Find something else. But this idea that Qigong is all you need um, is rarely, rarely true. So these people who cling to this idea of, oh, I got to hold on to my Qigong, uh, if they take an honest look at their results, it's not true. They would benefit more from combining things with Qigong. And some of this is not Qigong's fault. There's nothing wrong with the Qigong. We're just not practicing it at a deep enough level. Even after two decades of practicing Qigong, you know, I still have, I still have so much to learn in the art. There's more to do. So some of it is just like, you know, I'm just not advanced enough. Or as I sometimes tell students, sometimes students will say things like, Oh, but the mind is the most, or the shun in Chinese medicine, the, the mind and the chi, those are the most powerful things in the universe, and that's all we need, and that's all we should need to heal ourselves. And while that may technically be true, I, I can't disagree with those, those statements, here's the honest truth. Your mind is not that powerful. Be honest with yourself. You haven't done that kind of training. You don't practice for hours a day. You don't, you haven't been doing this for long enough to go into those deeper states necessary for, let's just call it miraculous healing. Uh, I mean, I still think that even at a base level, even my students with one or two years of, you know, let's just say modern average Qigong practice, they still get pretty miraculous results. But let's be realistic. Let's look at what's actually happening and decide, okay, could I use a boost? For example, I'll give you the, the most common example. And the one that actually woke me up first was my, this old master that I studied with that I was mentioning, he would tell diabetics, type two diabetics, adult onset diabetics, that Qigong was all they need. And he would even tell them that if they practice Qigong, they'll not only cure their diabetes, but they'll be able to eat sugar freely again, like a normal person. And you know, this is a really problematic thing to tell diabetics. And over the years, I met many diabetic students, his students, these were, I was just a disciple, but his students would come to me with questions. And very often the question was like, well, I've been doing what he told me to do and I, I really believe in this Qigong and I think it's helping, but you know, I, I, my, my blood sugar isn't changing. You know, they have a clear measure with diabetes. You can just measure your blood sugar. And I would just sort of quietly and discreetly coach these students to make some dietary changes. I mean, you know, these were diabetics who were eating like crap and weren't making dietary changes. If anything, they were eating sugar because, you know, the master said they could do it and that's not going to work. So nutritional therapy is an art in the Chinese, the, in Chinese medicine. So they had to pay attention to nutritional therapy. They had to make some changes in their diet and then their Qigong took off and their results got better. And I, I don't like to use the word cure for many, many reasons, but you know, they, they saw sort of the results that they were promised by making changes in their diet and sometimes by also seeing an acupuncturist. So we need to be very careful of that kind of thing of there's just like sort of positive thinking and just pretending that we're getting the res results. How are you measuring? So if you're a diabetic, there's an easy measure. It is your blood sugar, or, you know, your insulin levels, is, is all of that improving as a result of just practicing Qigong? And if not, well, find something else that works for you that fits in with your worldview and your schedule and whatever's available locally, or you can find stuff online now. Find what works for you pursue it and then continue to measure your results. So it, for example, in my case, I've gotten tremendous benefit from combining acupuncture, herbology, and massage with my Qigong practice. And then 
more recently, the past couple of years, this myofascial release with this colleague of mine, I got tremendous benefit from it. Personally, me, myself, I got benefit from it. It's not just something that I thought was cool and you know I would recommend to my student. I tried it myself, I got tremendous benefit from it. I'll give you an example. Um, I had stuck fascia adhesions in my quads, my, my thigh muscles, um, and those were blocking the flow of chi down my legs and causing other problems. And, you know, I couldn't, not only could I not get those to release with Qigong, I just couldn't figure out a way to do it, even at my level. But I think that some of my Qigong practices were aggravating the problem in the sense that not, nothing wrong with Qigong again, but things like the horse stance, for example, where you stand, I can't really show it, but you stand in a very deep stance. You see that? Oops. I don't think that's going to work. But, you know, you stand, sit in a very deep stance and, you know, you're using... Sorry, I just got, I thought I lost you there. You're using the quadriceps muscles and tightening them up. Uh, anyway, I, I think that maybe that was con contributing to the adhesions in my thigh muscles. And by following this method of myofascial release and by uh, releasing those adhesions in my quadriceps muscles, I my qigong took off. I was able to get more qi down my legs. I was able to do more. You know, it was just it was very beneficial for me. Um, it didn't replace my qigong by any means. If anything, it was just a little thing that I did on the side. It wasn't something that I was doing a tremendous amount of. It was like a little bit of myofascial release added to my existing qigong practice um, really helped me out. So that's my message to you that basically the answer to the question I posed in the beginning is qigong enough? You, probably not. Probably not. You should probably be, you know, using other methods, whether that's adjusting your diet to whatever you think is suitable or getting some acupuncture or some massage whatever you feel is best for you I'm not gonna tell you exactly what to do I'll give you my best tips and advice but why not take advantage of the synergy why should we dogmatically try to force Qigong to be everything uh, when we have you know say I was gonna say an ocean but it's technically a sea it's the Mediterranean uh, we have a, a sea of possibilities in terms of therapies these days, and you, you should take advantage of those. You, it's, we're so lucky to have all these tools and options and, and information and teachers available, so take advantage of them and then see. Here's the real thing. The real message to you is see. Did it help? Are you getting better results? Did it help with your pain? Did it help you uh, get through a plateau in your own Qigong practice? That's another thing. Sometimes you're just stuck on a plateau. Again, it's not the fault of Qigong, it's just part of the learning process in any art. You're stuck on a plateau, you can't really get to the next level, but by incorporating something else, um, that pushes you to the next level. You know, whether that's myofascial release or acupuncture or could be Zen meditation. I don't know, it might be something I've never heard of. Like I, I hear that drum circles are really cool. I've never done one, I don't know anything about it. If that works for you, if a drum circle works for you, then do it, but don't stop practicing Qigong. And at the same time, have respect for Qigong. I, I think that was the, the misconception in some of the students is that um, they somehow thought that I was disrespecting Qigong. And let me tell you this, my understanding and my vision of the past masters of Qigong is they would support me in what, I was, what I'm saying. There, it takes nothing away from Qigong to say that Qigong complements other arts and that we are lucky to have access to other arts. So go out there, enjoy the world of possibilities in healing arts and other arts. You know, healing is sometimes not even just physical, energetic, or emotional. Sometimes it's spiritual. You're, you're doing things that heal, heal your, your, I'll just say your soul, because I don't have a better word for that right now. Uh, if those things, you know, deepen your practice, go for it. Do those things and combine them with your Qigong practice, not in the actual session, but you know, you do them in addition to your Qigong, and then most importantly, enjoy the additional benefits. I'm enjoying in my life the additional benefits of having combined my Qigong with things like acupuncture, herbology, massage, and myofascial release, and I hope you will do the same as you continue to practice this beautiful art of Qigong. So I, I hope that was clear, and I hope it was helpful, and I look forward to connecting with you again in a future walk and talk video.